Wants to buy my Herald of Ash for 25C. This is a Herald of Ash. This is 25C. Oh, what is that? A six linked Lion Eyes Glare. Hello, sir. Shit, these boys hurt. Oh. Avoid battery! Let's go, boys! Let's go, boys! Avoid battery! Oh, this boss, dude. Oh. My instance crashes now on the boss. And f off, this is an expensive map. You fucking piece of shit. You fucking piece of shit, dude. Why does always the instance crash in a tier 16 corrupted map, dude? Hey guys, and welcome to a new video. Today, another update on the Bane Pop Occultist. And this time, so yesterday, we did talk a lot about the Atlas and how to uh, get things going, to get the Conquerors going, to get new maps and so on. And today, we're gonna talk a little bit more about the build because... Since today we are low life and not carcass check life based anymore. So, yesterday I posted the final version. It's not 100% the final version of the life build, but it's the last state that I played with it before I said we're gonna change into the shafts. So, the reason for that is first of all, there is um, a lot of benefits that we have on low life. First of all, if you remember on the carcass check build, 4,000 life. Now we have 8,000 energy shield. So you have more survivability, a bigger effective um, HP pool, and you also have more damage because uh, as long as you're on low life and you have the pain attunement skilled, you have 30% more spell damage. And as we know, blight, bane, essence drain, and so on, uh, scale with spell damage as well. But before we talk more about that, map showcase the early version um, because if you're new to this whole series where I'm updating my builds every single day until the Awakener is down and the Atlas is clear we're gonna take a look at the map showcase and this time around it's not a map it's going to be um, a delf since I wanted to show this one uh, quite early as well but I never had soul fight so before I, w I waste all my soul fight now or progress further we're currently on delf um, what are we 149 so 81 so we're close to the highest tier and this is how it looks like as the bane pop occultist if you are uh running delf and it will stay the same until uh yeah until end of days basically because i'm doing tier 16s all day long basically and delf is also a pretty big blast so again back to the um version with life or energy shield or low life or ci Thing is, a lot of people will ask me now, hey, wait a second, you started as a life build, now you're energy shield. Why? 
and can you do it as well? The thing is, um, low life version is better than a life version. As I said, for obvious reasons, more survivability, a bigger uh, HP pool, and also more damage, but less area of effect. So I think we run a second one here as well, because this was actually pretty smooth. And this is what I do, you know, as soon as my Nico is full, besides grinding the Atlas, I'm just running here uh, my Delphs, uh, because of the map sustain and the drops that I'll get. So here another Sulfite, and as you see, it's just very, very nice. A little bit less area of effect, obviously, because we skipped one um, area of effect node on the left side of the tree, and uh, we are also skipping the carcass check, so we have about 80% less area of effect, but still, the pops are there. It's a lot of fun to play still. Uh, it's kind of the same, just um, a better base, basically, right? So I would say let's kill off this delve and then let's go to hideout and talk about the gear changes, the variations, and what you should do or can do. So, bop here, bop there, bop there, and done, done, so, this one, ah, we are back here, but yeah, as you see, just Bane, easy clap, completely stupid easy, and this is how I like my builds, fast and easy, so, let's go back to hideout, and sorry if I sound tired, look tired, it's freaking, what is it, 8 in the morning? I think it's 8 in the morning and I've been streaming all night long, so uh, yeah, I'm just trying to finish this video before I go to bed, take some sleep, and then we're gonna continue pushing into the Atlas. So, first of all, quick update on the Atlas. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. I have 17 Watchstones, I think, for now. I have uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 out of 8 regions fully completed with all bonus objectives. So as you see, 149 of 154. I wanted to finish that before the video, but sadly, or good, uh, I got a, a bunch of Nikos left, so I was capped on Sulfite, so I stopped mapping and push away the Sulfite, and then I keep on mapping, because the worst thing is, if you are having capped Sulfite and you find a random Nico in your maps, in your tier 16 maps, so you would miss out a 5,000 Sulfite, because as you saw in the clips before, if you are... Uh, mapping and then you say shit I'm capped I need to go out before you pick up the soul fight run a couple delves then go back in the map you usually crash somebody uh, it happened to me today and somebody said um, that happens quite often if you are leaving a map to delve and then go back to the map that it crashes which is kind of bad so always make sure once you are capped that you just farm your soul fight even if you don't want to push delve now Still do it because the next map could ha randomly have a Nico, and once you're up for delving and really motivated to delve, then you look back and be like, shit, I haven't picked up those or I was overcapped and so on. All right, this is for the map state, so I guess I'm finishing that today, and then we're gonna hard push all the conquerors to finish them off. All right, build low life, energy shield based bane, pop, oh, occultist, something like that. So, first of all, why? As I said before, why low life? Because the more damage and so on. Should you do this as well? If you have the currency for it. Low life builds are by far pretty much one of the most expensive versions to play a build. I always recommend, and I do it myself, I play life builds early on. Because it's way cheaper to get life items going. It's solo self unviable. Because in the first couple of days you will not probably have a lot of currency or um, be able to invest into too much. You have life flasks that you don't have on an energy shield build. Uh, and yeah, these are the major reasons why you should go live early on. So, uh, shafts usually cost like a five link shafts, uh, like I have, is about, yeah, I would say three exalts, roughly at this price, right? So, if you don't have the three exalts, you should not go low live. Why? You might ask. This shafts, it has the stat, or at least every shafts, has chaos damage, does not bypass your energy shield. So, the same way as our um, Chaos skills work is they ignore the energy shield of the enemy. So if the enemy has a thousand life and a, a million energy shield, you do a thousand Chaos damage, it's dead. Same is for us. That means I have an effective life pool of 59, that is the, the last piece uh, that I have unreserved here, is life. That means if I don't have the shafts with the, with the set Chaos damage does not bypass energy shield, means I can have a thousand or let's say 10,000 energy shield. If I get 59 chaos damage, I'm dead. So it will completely ignore that. So if you don't have the chevrons, uh, you cannot play low life because everything will kill you that has chaos damage. And as we figured out, uh, 
the poison boss for example poison is a, a, also a chaos damage over time and also the metamorphs do have a lot of poison or chaos damage so you would die all the time so if you cannot afford if you don't have the couple exalts to get a shafts stay on life build all right next item that goes very well with the shafts is the presence of chayular in this build it or at least as an occultist it is not needed the main reason why people on low life like miners and all that kind of stuff I use a presence of Chayular is because cannot be stunned. Stun immunity is one of the most important things in this game. Luckily, our ascendancy offers us the same. So if we say here, Vile Bastion, it says um, cannot be stunned while you have energy shield. I mean, obviously, I mean, I have, I'm low life, right? So if my energy shield is gone, I have 59 life. And if I get stunned then with 59 life, I think it doesn't really matter, right? So as long as we have energy shield, we are stun immune. And this is why we don't necessarily have to go to Presence of Chayula. So why did I take it? First of all, it gives a bunch of energy shield because 20% of my maximum life is converted to energy shield. That is for me, I cannot unequip that because then I don't have my gloves because of the strength that I'm getting here from the all attributes. But it's roughly one and a half thousand energy shield that I'm getting from the presence of Chayular. Second of all, a 60% chaos resistance. The thing is, I have here 60% chaos resistance. My ascendancy here, the withering presence, gives me 60% chaos resistance, is 120%. Then we have some chaos resistance over here and over here. And now we have a total of 80% chaos resistance. So we are capped out on all resistance and also chaos resistance. And with the um, with the Pantheon powers that I forgot how to pull them up. Wait, is my keyboard already? Yeah, as always, my keyboard always resets. So um, I have Soul of Shakari upgraded to immune to poison. So that means I'm immune to poison and I have 75% chaos resistance. So the reason for me taking this, I was rest kept before uh, equipping the presence of Chayular. Uh, I do get a, a one and a half thousand to two thousand uh, energy shield based on your life and you get the chaos resistance which is super nice to have okay so if you don't have the currency for a present of Chayula because they're also like two or three exalts um you don't have to take it but I think it's a great still a great nice item we do have now double stun immunity which doesn't really make sense but in the other hand I could remove now these two points and get something else but in the other hand I'm running one curse and malediction doesn't bring me a lot and forbidden power i'm not scaling power charges anymore so that doesn't bring me a lot either so i'm sticking with that and i'm sticking with the press of chayular all right let's make a small and quick build guide okay i'm just going quickly over every single item this is not the final version there's still a lot of improvements to make that i want to talk about as well in this uh in this video here but i want to talk about uh, quickly on the updates and the uh, things that i changed as uh, the most important thing here, every single rare item is new, okay? I search for energy shield resistance instead of life resistance. Obviously, we're an energy shield build. In the helm, I'm still having flame dash with arcane surge. Um, keep it on low level so you proc it once you are uh, using one flame dash. Uh, then I have my cast on death portal, which saves up a huge amount of time when I'm mapping, especially now on all these tier 16 maps. Sometimes with sextants, I'm corrupting those. They have sometimes such insane, uh, I say, rippy mods. And it's the best thing if you're at the end of a map and you die to the metamorph or something that once you die you spawn a portal so you just go back into the map and you're exactly where you died it's just not recommended for hardcore um then on the shafts now bane despair efficiency control destruction and swift affliction six link would be void manipulation and this is something kind of weird so if we're taking a look at my beautiful right down here the first carcass jack 31 fusings to link of the unraveling 13 fusings shafts at the moment 2.2k still not six link i think this is now the revenge for those two lucky six link sadly i did farm a lot of currency i wonder i want to add this real quick i got a void battery today for five and a half exalts i got a doctor card for seven and a half exalts i found the six link linus glare for two and a half exalts i found an impulsor for one and a half exalts that i still have here uh for sale or 1.3 um I had a lot of good drops actually. I sold the carcass check for 10 exalts. So I can I can say I roughly spent 30 exalts today with switching to energy shield, which took about 10 exalts, roughly the amount that I had on the carcass check. I spent um, the 2000 fusings that was like more than 10 exalts. 
Uh, and then, what was the next part? Yeah, buying a lot of maps. So I'm still trying to finish my uh, Atlas and some of these maps on tier 15 or 16, uh, like these here, Palace tier 15, some of those maps cost like 20 to 30 chaos per piece, okay? So yeah, there was a lot of currency, but I'm soon there, I soon can just farm just every single map that I want without bothering buying new maps and stuff. All right. Uh, better would be if you have a six link and add an empower gem because an empower gem hires the base level of Bane and this should be technically more DPS. Uh, weapons still the same, double void battery for the mapping setup which is spell totem, multiple totems and wither uh, with cast one damage taken, low level, immortal call and withering step. Uh, in my offhand still the cane of the unraveling with a six link blight setup with vile blight, swift affliction, efficiency, infused channeling, Void Manipulation and Control Destruction. This is my single target setup. So with the Cane of the Unraveling and Double Spreading Rot, we are applying Wither Stacks. And if we are having the Dual Wield setup, we are applying the Wither Stacks through our Wither Totem. Uh, the Gloves, Energy Shield, Resistance, we have here uh, Val Discipline. This is super nice. Uh, that instantly starts your Energy Shield Recharge, the Val one. So what I do is, if I'm on a tier 60 map, I spawn a Metamorph, I start DPSing him, and I use my Vile Discipline, and for the next 4 seconds I can just stand still and permanently cast Blight until I get one-shotted, or if I get one-shot. But this is actually rare, um, so I'm just dotting it, I pop my Vile, uh, Vile Discipline, I have permanent regen, I just stand there, and after 3.5 seconds I flame dash away, the Metamorph dies from the Chaos, and I'm safe. Super nice. Then Malevolence, Clarity, and Blood Magic on life. Why Clarity? This is just a preparation because I, at some point I want to have the Watcher's Eye with a Clarity Maximum uh, Energy Shield from Mana basically, right? This mod goes alone, just a mod alone is about 15, 16 Exalts as a Watcher's Eye. I don't have it yet, but I still want to plan this uh, gem in. Because the worst thing is if you plan all your gems uh, and then you find out, shit, I need, I all my gems are full. Uh, I don't have any more spots, but I need to find a way to get clarity going. So that's why I build it in early. So once I have the jewel, I don't have to worry about it anymore. And currently, I'm not even having that act uh, activated because my blood magic is not high enough. Then for the boots, Sintrack, super nice and cheap version to get a lot of energy shield. Uh, this costs about 2-3 chaos depending on, on the rolls. Mine is pretty well rolled, costs about 10 chaos. Uh, super nice to get started here with the Herald of Ash, burning damage. A swift affliction and increased area of effect for the nice pops. The rest of the items, whether it's the helm, the unique rings or the belt, energy shield, resistance, that's all you need. So then we have on the skill tree. This is completely new now. Uh, we went away from malediction and all that stuff. We are now running only one single curse because we skipped the vixen gloves, right? Uh, with uh, enfeeble and temp chains. But now we have the profane bloom. Uh, for the explosion, we have Withering Presence for the damage over time multiplier, the Wither effect, and the damage over time uh, for the Chaos Resistance. Uh, here as well, nearby enemies have Chaos Resistance, they get more damage, Val Bastion for the Energy Shield and Stun Immunity. So, in terms of the tree, it is kind of the same, right? We, we see the same layout, we just don't move to the left side and pick up Amplify and the Life Nodes. We skip all of that and keep on on the right side. I have here double... Energy from within, because you maybe wonder why um, do I have life nodes here. Uh, the energy from within is a jewel that transforms life nodes into energy shield. So if, we, if I put this away, you see this is life, life resistance, life. Now I put this one in, now it's energy shield, energy shield resistance, energy shield. The same way I apply here. So this cluster here has a mix of life and energy shield. If I put this one in, it's only energy shield. So you have 8, 8, 8 and 16% increased energy shield, which is a lot. Uh, on the bottom side, more energy shield, right side, energy shield. Here we have the second spreading rot, and the rest stays the same. Instead of the life nodes here, we take the energy shield nodes. Pretty easy, right? Uh, and I have one point here in reduced mana reservation, so I can reserve my malevolence on, uh, on life. As soon as this gem gets level 20 or 21, I can put this one away, and I, can still, uh, I will still be able to reserve this one uh, on life without the reserve. Good. That's for the tree. I don't want to post the path of building yet because there is still a lot of changes to be made. Same as on the life build. Every day we get more currency. Uh, we're changing the build based on the items that we get. We are just a skill tree. I maybe even think of going Ghost Reaver and apply an added Chaos damage to my Bane. So I have an option to leech. Or even uh, switching from Blight setup 
to an essence drain setup but if i take essence drain uh, we have to take Salad's Oath for uh, so the, the region that I get from Essence Drain will apply to Energy Shield instead. So as you see, there's a lot of things to test and try out. This is all that I want to do uh, in the next couple of days. But this is the current progress. Uh, you can import my profile. Um, just open your path of building, say import, account name is MB Extreme. Uh, choose the, the Metamorph League and I only have this character in the Metamorph League, League, it's the MBX Occultist, just import that one and you have all my tree and everything done. As I said, I don't want to post the tree because it's not done yet or at least the build, the path of building, it's not done yet, right? Check. What else? Uh, flasks, we have uh, Curse Immune, Freeze Immune, Bleed Immune, still trying. I have here this one. I wanted to go for a Rumi's Concoction but I choose to go with a mana flask with the mod flask effect is not removed at full mana so I can just spam everything and you see that for the full uh, five seconds I'm getting mana and the reason why I use that is uh, with the no region maps so if you have maps that have can uh, players cannot regenerate life mana blah 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 this is regen okay that doesn't mean uh, energy shield recovery that means as soon as my energy shield recovery uh, starts working, it's working. But I, I'm, I'm using like two or three banes and I cannot uh, use flame dash anymore because of the mod that I cannot re uh, reserve mana. That's why I'm having this uh, flask here. And with this flask, I can absolutely run 100% of all map mods, which is nice. Especially when you're just using all your tier 16, you, you chisel them up, you alk them, you vile them, you sometimes get eight modded uh, things and... You can just run whatever. You don't have to pay attention. Ellie Reflect, Fist Reflect, no region maps, whatever you want to run, just run it. Ultra safe, super nice and easy. All right, this is the current state of the art, still with my dual wielding setup here. Um, and at the moment, as I said, gonna finish today the Atlas and then we're gonna start grinding up the Awakener bonus. The good thing here is the Awakener bonus is an additional to the other one, right? So we have like, just for a small reminder what this one means. You have a 154% chance to roll a tier higher. That means if you would roll a tier 1 map, it has a 100% chance <clears throat> to roll tier 2, right? Because we have 154. And then we have 54% chance that the tier 2 map that we just... So we drop a tier 1, 100% chance to roll tier 2. And then 54% uh, chance to roll tier 3. And this is the same effect here, right? Um, that means that we're having the 154, the Awakener bonus... It's like when you have the highest tier, uh, that means a full uh, four stone region here, like here. Uh, and I'm running this map. As soon as I have Awakening level two, which I have four at the moment, as soon as I complete this map, I get this one bonus uh, um, uh, uploaded. Uh, and then it, it counts the same, it just counts half of it. So the half of 154 is um, 75, 77. So we take another plus 77. So we have a total of 231. That means 100% chance to roll one tier higher, then 100% ch uh, chance to roll another tier higher, and then 31% chance to roll three tiers higher. So this is kind of unnecessary or unimportant, but it comes into account at one certain level when you have all the watchstones and all the maps completed. Um, that means that every map, so every uh, having four stones in a region means every map is at least tier 14. You're 14, 15, 16. These are the only maps you're going to drop. Now imagine you have all watchstones in, all 32 watchstones in here. Your whole atlas is 14, 15, 16. So you drop a tier 14 map. Ah, atlas bonus, it will be tier 15. You draw, uh, you, it, it rolls tier 15. You have the other 100%. It rolls tier 16. And it would generally have a uh, chance for 31% to roll tier 17. But tier 17 doesn't exist. So if you have your Awakening bonus and your Atlas bonus completed and you're having your Watchstones in there, means whatever map you're going to find, every single map will be Tier 16. And you can permanently sustain Tier 16 maps without Saxons, without Chisels, without anything else. Just I'll go find a ton of maps, run more Tier 16. And I'm looking so forward to that because this is going to be super nice and amazing. Good. I think that's it for today's episode. Hope you stay tuned with the upcoming updates on the low life um, Bane Pop Occultist. And I hope that I get soon another chance to try the Awakener. And maybe with this build, we're going to defeat him. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. And see you on the next video.